Hi all, so we're back again today with another lesson. Uh, this time it's New York City Serenade, which is the seventh and final track on Bruce Springsteen's second album titled The Wild, The Innocent, and The E Street Shuffle. Okay, so this is a, an underrated gem for sure. Um, it's got some cool little guitar solos um, and it, the kind of the main guitar solo happens right after the piano introduction by the great David Sanchez, who was only in the E Street Band for you know a couple years or whatever, but regardless, uh, a great start to the song. Uh, the, the first two minutes of the track are entirely instrumental, so let's jump into the part where the guitar uh, enters. So uh, the song is primarily you're starting every section of the song pretty much actually with most of the time an A major chord. As we'll see later so the intro is a little bit different uh, it's got a little bit different flavor to it it's kind of an extension of of a major up here but it's got a really jazzy kind of almost kind of classical guitar feel so here's what that intro guitar solo sounds like I'm gonna play it really slowly and then we'll go through it note by note Okay, so I'll show you a couple different ways to play that intro guitar solo, let's call it. So you can play it up here. But Bruce definitely plays it down here. I saw the band play this song in August of 2016. I saw them play it at MetLife Stadium in New Jersey. And I looked up at the big uh, video board and Bruce was playing it in this position. He's playing it down here at the fifth and seventh fret on the two highest strings. Again, what I'm about to show you, like I just said, you can play in multiple positions on the neck. Do whatever you feel comfortable with, but I'm gonna show you the way that Bruce plays it. So, let's jump in. We're starting with dyads here. You're playing both the B and the high E string at the same time sliding from the 5th to the 7th, strumming the 7th a bunch of times. We're actually we're just using that 7th on the B string, sliding down the 5th, picking that a few times, and you're going back up, 5-7 on the B, 5-7 on the high E, bending that up a whole step or as, as high as you can, it's a little bit tougher on acoustic here at the 7th fret high E, releasing it then, and then we're going into this little pull off here, 6-4 on the G string. So this is kind of the first phrase, I'll go through it one more time. There's kind of like three phrases to this guitar solo, here we go. Okay, so you're gonna have to listen to the recording and figure out the exact timing of this. It's really loose playing. It's it's kind of jammy and jazzy feeling. It's not, uh, you know, he's kind of missing things and coming in a little bit after the beat at some points in the solo, which makes it sound really cool actually. Um, and just to note, the solo comes in at about a minute and 37 seconds into the song. So David Sanchez does that really awesome, really like horror movie sounding uh, piano introduction. This solo just kind of barnstorms right in to to really start the song off so anyway that's the first phrase of the solo now we're into the second phrase and this is again really loose almost sloppy playing on Bruce's part but it does really suit the track and it sounds excellent <laughs> So that's the second phrase. It's starting here on the second fret on the D string, then up to the fourth fret on the D string, the same picking pattern. We're ascending here then after that, four, five, six on the G string, 
five on the B, pick the seventh fret on the B twice and add a little bit of vibrato. So one more time, this phrase goes. Again, it feels like there's almost like extra notes in there or something. It's, it's very loosely played. So you're just gonna have to listen to the recording and figure out the exact timing. And also, it's very important how he picks those notes. He's really picking, he's really picking like that. Varying intensity with his right hand here when he's picking. So just something to listen for. The last phrase, we're going way up here. There's a couple different ways you can play this. You can use, like remember how we were down here earlier? You're doing the same thing up here, but now you're at the 12th and the 14th fret on the uh, B in the high E. So slide up from 12, 12 to 14 to 14. Or you can hammer on, it's almost like the top of an A major. So you can hammer on either way if you, if you wanna keep your 14th fret on the B, 12th fret high E and play that melody line in the high E, 12 to 14, and back down to 12. Um, it's up to you. I can't exactly hear what's going on in the recording. I think it sounds cool to go like this. Especially if you have a cutaway up here, it's a lot easier to play that section. So it does that, and then we're into this final little lick here, uh, kind of right back where we started with this. So it goes. Sorry, it's actually, so you bend it up, it's 5-7 on the B, 5-7 on the high E. So you bend it, and you don't release it, you just bend it and then play it natural. Okay, so that is the intro solo, this is the most difficult part of the song, so let's go through it, I'm going to go through it really slowly one more time. I'll try and get all those accents and how he plays on the record, I'll try and make sure I play it like that right now. So here we go. Okay, so that is the intro guitar solo. Um, probably a lot of you watching this lesson maybe wanting to learn that section. It's kind of a, a cool thing, and unlike a lot of uh, other Springsteen songs, really in his entire discography, it's it's definitely different than your typical Springsteen song. Uh, so anyways, now we're into the chords, which really aren't bad. So I'm just going to go over the, the chord names first, and I'll tell you how to play it and the shapes and the voicings I use in one second. So it goes A... It's placed throughout the verses over and over again. It's A F sharp minor, then to a B minor, A sus4, A major, F sharp minor, B minor, A sus4. That's it. Plays over and over again throughout the verses, usually uh, four times in one verse. So how I play it, I'm playing my A major like this. Open two, two, two on the, you're muting the, the high E and the low E string. I'm going to an F sharp minor. You can play a full F sharp minor chord, but I just like to play it like this. I guess it's four on the A, four on the D, two, two on the G and the B. It's a really easy chord switch to go like this. Just kind of throwing those two. See that? It makes the chord switch easier, especially if you're a beginner. Uh, but obviously, great practice to just play the full bar chord. Okay, then you're going to a B minor chord, which Bruce plays. Again, when I saw him play it live, he was going like this. He plays it that way too. Now he plays his B minor just like that. He plays the top of a B minor shape. Four on the D, four on the G, 
three on the B, two on the high E. Again, just makes switching between those chords easier. And when you're playing this on acoustic guitar, it's tough to hold down bar chords for a really long time. Okay, the final chord shape is an A sus4. Open on the A string, two on the D, two on the G, three on the B. Open high E, ringing out. Okay, so here's the entire verse section. Again, you can, you can play those chords any way you want. It's important to note here that the F sharp minor, you could also play it as an F sharp minor 7 if you're feeling fancy or if you just want to change it up because it's a really long song and you're going to be playing the same chords over and over again. You may want to make it more of a jazzier sound and just make it a minor 7 chord. Same goes for B minor. You could take that, I guess that ring finger off here and just play it as a B, B minor 7. Again, optional. Okay, so. That progression, A, F sharp minor, B minor, A sus4, plays four times in the verse. And also, it kind of, right before Bruce starts singing, that's the progression he plays. And he does a, he strums that F sharp minor really loud and the B minor really loud too. Uh, so pay attention to the intensity of the strumming. Okay, anyway, after it plays four times in the verses, when he says, Jackie's heels of stem, that part, it goes from B minor to F sharp minor. Together they're gonna boogaloo down Broadway. So he does this B minor, F sharp minor twice. Now this this third time he changes it. It's midnight in Manhattan. It's B minor. This is no time to get cute. It's a D major. It's a mad dog's promenade. So it's B minor to F sharp minor twice. And then when he gets to that final, this is no time to get cute. He goes from B minor to a D major. And then when he says mad dog's promenade, it's, it's an E sus4. Open two, two, two. Open, open. Take that pinky off to make it a regular E major. One more time, E sus4, E major. So walk tall, right back into the regular verse. A, F sharp minor, E minor, A sus4. Okay, so you get the idea with the verses. That's pretty much plays over and over again it's um really throughout the song he's just varying his drumming and like i said there's so many different ways of playing those chords whatever you really want to do it's up to you <laughs> i like to just mix and match as, as i play it again because it's such a long song i get sick of playing the chords the same way over and over again so the really the only other section of this song is the bridge when he sings but i know that she won't take the train that section goes b minor f sharp minor won't take the train no she won't take the train oh she won't take the train keep playing b minor f sharp minor we get to the fourth time after the fourth time go from F sharp minor to D major. E sus4 to E major. So one more time. But I know that she won't take the train. No, she won't take the train. Oh, she won't take the train. No, she won't take the train. She won't take the train. No, she won't take the train. Oh, she won't take the train. No, she won't take the train. Tracks are gonna slow her down. This boy will be gone. So lost. Right? Just break right back into the. 
sometimes you just gotta walk on. You get the idea. Okay, so rewind and rewatch everything I just said for the chord sections. Listen to it. It's it's helpful actually because the, the same sections and parts keep repeating, so it gives you plenty of time to practice as you go through the song. Um, so while I suggest practicing it slowly, you can pick it up as you go along because it's so repetitive after a while. Okay, so that is all the rhythm um, guitar sections in the song. And I really, I only hear an acoustic guitar on the recording. I don't hear many electric guitars in there. Um, there's lots of strings and obviously some saxophone and uh, lots of, it's a very piano heavy song. Um, so it sounds really good if you're just simply strumming the chords the whole time. Don't go over the top with it if you're in a band or anything like that. Um, you know, other than that guitar solo, let the other band members really take the, the front seat and um, steal the stage because it's, it's a great piano song. Anyway, there's one final little detail that I want to add to this tutorial. Um, you can hear it at, I wrote it down, it's about 6.58. So 6 minutes and 58 seconds into the song. So, you know, uh, right around the 7 minute mark. You can hear this kind of buried in the mix. It's, again, I'm assuming Bruce on an acoustic guitar. It's kind of a mini guitar solo, um, just where the song's breaking right before he goes in the final. He's singing. Kind of that final outro section, let's call it. Well, right before that, he plays that. So it goes... You're picking the 7th fret and then hammering on to the ninth fret here on the low E string. Then you're going from... So 7th fret, you pick it a few times on the A string, then slide from the 9th to the 11th on the A string. That's 9 and 11 on the G string, add some vibrato here at the 11th fret on the G. And then the last little lick, uh, right before he starts singing again, he goes like this. It's 12, 14, hammer on at the on the B string. 12, 14, hammer on, pull off on the high E string. So one more time, it's... It's very random in its timing. It's difficult for me to play it right now without listening to the recording. It's, again, very loose playing like the rest of the song from a lead guitar perspective. Bruce is just playing sort of random notes. Um, they sound good, of course, but uh, they're, uh, it's, it's, you really got to listen to the recording if you want to get that timing perfectly down because it's, it, it just seems a little off. But again, that really adds to the song. Uh, so uh, have a listen to this one. Um, it's not too difficult. It's, it's good if you're just getting into bar chords because... Um, you know, those are really important shapes to know. And F sharp minor and B minor, if you're a beginner guitar player, are two of the, you know, if you know those chords, you can play a lot of songs. Um, so really good shapes to learn if you're just starting out. Uh, so that is it for this lesson. Uh, this is one of my favorite Springsteen tunes. I think it's his most underrated song that he's ever released. Uh, it, it's a real sign of the greatness that is to come on, on Born to Run kind of that long, sprawling narrative of going to New York City for a night with your friends or whatever, um, traveling from Jersey to the Big Apple. And I think it's just, it's so well done, the imagery and the storytelling and all kind of the characters within it. Um, An Incident on 57th Street and Rosalita uh, helped to make it one of the best album sides probably that I've ever heard. Um, those three songs in a row on The Wild and the Innocent and the E Street Shuffle are uh, three of Springsteen's best songs, but just, again, a sign of the greatness that is to come from Bruce Springsteen. Um, this album is often overlooked among his uh, releases, and it's understandable. He, he hit a lot of great albums, but this one was really special, and I think, again, it's so... I don't want to use the word experimental because that's not the right word, but it's very rough around the edges or kind of um yeah rough around the edges it's it's imperfect but in a really cool way and this this album is by far his jazziest and also his most maybe soulful 
It reminds me of Van Morrison a lot of times, particularly Rosalita um, and songs like Kitty's Back and the E Street Shuffle. Um, but this song too, uh, you know, that album really, and this song I think is the best song in that album, on The Wild and the Innocent and E Street Shuffle. And I know it's a, a hardcore boss fan, this, you know, favorite, this one. So, uh, you know, that's really, that's really saying something. He, he came out with a lot of great songs, but this one is, is really different than, you know, a lot of the rest. So, uh, anyways, listen to it, enjoy it. Um, you know, have fun playing this one because it's, it's a cool one to learn. And, uh, you know, I, I couldn't find a lot of great resources for this one on the internet, particularly with those solos. Some of them got close, but, uh, None of them I, I thought really nailed it on the head. So I wanted to give my take on it and how I've been playing it for years. So, um, and again, I saw Bruce play this live. It was awesome <laughs> to open the the second show we did at MetLife in 2016. It was August 25th, 2016. Um, <clears throat> yeah, he opened with this song with the orchestra uh, playing the strings behind him. And it was amazing. <laughs> it was truly awe-inspiring and obviously a, a real rarity to hear this live and he only pretty much only plays in New York so um, this is the way he played it I was looking up at the <laughs> I saw it you know I took a mental note when I saw him playing it on the on the jumbotron pretty much you know he, he's playing in that position so again rewind and rewatch this video and you'll be playing it just like Bruce so thank you for watching there'll be more lessons on the way soon I appreciate the support I didn't think uh, that when I started this channel about a month ago, I didn't think that I would, uh, you know, be getting hundreds of views on some of these videos, uh, particularly one of my Radiohead ones. So um, thank you to those of you out there who are watching and enjoy it. I hope it helps. Um, I just put it out there to maybe th th in the hopes that someone would learn how to play the song and have the kind of same enthusiasm that I would have for it. Uh, that was all I really ever, I, you know, I didn't do this for for the views or anything i'm just i'm glad i can help somebody um so that that's really cool to see that um and uh, uh you know please leave a comment below hit like or subscribe if you like what i'm doing and uh again thank you for your support we'll see you another lesson really soon take care of yourselves